Ralph Martin said a lot of great things, you know, but what I was most impressed with was just his personal witness, mm -hmm. um, both his story, but even more so just like how he presented things. Like there was an excitement about the, the way he presented stuff. And, and it was just like super simple in a way like, yeah. And so scripture says this. And so that's it. You know, like, like it's yeah. really right. like very simple and childlike, but obviously the man's brilliant. And I'm not to, yeah, just to say that it was just like a simple presentation, but I was like, wow, this man really believes, you know, um, mm -hmm. he really believes God at his word and he loves him tremendously. And so um, just to attest that, like, it, it's something that's not just written words on a, on a page, but he actually does believe. And, and, and it's once again, something I could speak. It spoke to my heart. Hopefully it happens for us where, okay, like we're falling in love more with the Lord and, and just our yes and the way in which we love and speak about him can speak once again to the wonderment that other people can have. Poco a poco vamos a llegar Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are We make our way Hey, hey, hey I'm Father Mark Marion Hey, I'm Father Anderson <laughs> That was weird That was cute I'm um, Father PT <laughs> That was awesome We're not good, we're just gonna keep it At the same time. time I just threw up a little bit oh. <laughs> You guys should start doing that every time is Just that start doing is? the is it, Can you tell me what's going on here? <laughs> well, that's called me being a human being Sorry I, sorry, I forgot. You never ever. Just bro, circumstances don't matter, bro. If you're in in union with the Lord, don't yeah, worry I don't that care. you just spilled your coffee. Actually, I printed right. one out for all of you guys, but you already had your own. Oh wow! But anyway, you oh. just spilled your coffee. <sighs> I spilled my coffee. Even though you're human, we still love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so this episode, as all episodes, mm. has it's dedicated to my hero. Your hero. Yeah, the me? man who's made me. Me? The man Thank who's you. made me who I am I today. <laughs> Ralph Martin. Inspired me for a number of years. Uh, Luke Benzinger. <laughs> oh, come on, Luke Benzinger. Luke Benzinger. We, uh, Luke's just getting started at Steubenville. Hey, Luke. Um, one, it's so we were down, Father Innocent and I were down visiting the Benzingers. I don't know where you guys were at. We're trying to get you to come down. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, actually, you did invite me and I, I couldn't go at that time. You did invite yeah. me as well. Yeah. Thank so. you for that. Thank you for the invitation, but... Do you guys want to have, plan your own trip? Yeah, that'd be <laughs> nice. we, might, we might do that. Uh, we have plans. Yes. <laughs> but one of the fun things about being like, you know, doing family with the Benzingers is like they're like, it like extends outside of the parents. And so uh, Luke and his brother, uh, Sam, and, and one of their buddies came to pick us up from the airport. And it was really funny because it was like, so it was the two of them in the front, us two in the back. And they had this whole like so weird th this whole shtick planned where they got us and like right when you're moving like going to like leave the airport like you like stop at a light and this dude like a young dude who we don't know just like gets in the car with his umbrella he just like gets in and he's like totally quiet and he's just sitting there in the back and we're like hey <laughs> what's your name it's like tony and he doesn't he doesn't really say anything and then um what else happens they then, have it all planned out they, they had it all planned so out this whole like weird and he thing. doesn't say anything and then he starts brushing his teeth yeah, that was the, that was like that was like he he just in the car he just starts with again without saying anything just kind of being awkward just brushes his teeth, and then Luke in the in the passenger seat has like this like plastic cup and he just reaches back and, he, and the kid just spits in the cup. <laughs> it's so weird. He had some, he had a whole bunch of pickles in a Nalgene it, bottle. Pickles, wow! Pickles in an Nalgene bottle. Mm -hmm. It was pretty funny though, but that's pretty epic. And then we got back to the Benzingers and he just left. He like got in his car and left. So there was no. It was just so funny and odd. And then we didn't really respond like this is super odd because we're used to meeting and having interesting experiences. Did you see him again? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So then he okay. came back like maybe 20 minutes later okay. and then they all started to laugh because it was like the the show was over. And they had a plan to like do like some finger painting in the back too, but like he got in the wrong seat or something like that. But, <laughs> oh, no. but I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, that's funny because a lot of life you have to do. We have to be like professional, you know, and I like when people are just sort of weird around us and pretty funny that is great like family um so anyway that made me very happy so again and he just started at Steubenville. so what's up luke and the rest of the and we also met a bunch of other friends i'm just going to start out with our whole new pensacola crew uh so sam tony uh luke patrick matt mary kate is a listener mary kate and ann sisters big listeners hannah michaela and mallory so shout outs to the o'grady's and the hit passes as well does luke even listen he does he, that's the thing that's yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. a very attentive listener. He'll bring up stuff. He's like, "Father, you said this or stories or the pickle mm. thing was all him." Mm. So he's an attentive listener. I like so I like that. Is he discerning his vocation? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> We're working, Luke. Well, I know you've never met me, Luke, but 
<laughs> you give me a call. Sounds yeah. like you're going to. <laughs> there might have been some names named that. Anyway, um, <laughs> excuse me. I don't don't love that question. Okay. Um, what else? What happened? What else happened with that? Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Well, it was what? great. What? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, that was the thing. We're working with. We're working on some like some new merch like poco poco is greater than abiding together oh like greater than sign abiding together yeah that's what, that luke was actually that was his idea yeah nice so we got we got some hot merch coming down <laughs> hey luke if you're listening can you work on the vest please I think, I think that'd be a popular seller yeah, yeah, yeah. i have saying. a question do we have any merch it's come we have it in progress and process Ooh, this is and, a real thing this is a real thing. I must have not been here. This is the best. Thing <laughs> no, no, no. This is yeah, we, we make decisions without you because you guys are never here. <laughs> oh. That's not true. Well, to be honest, I'm doing this without consulting <laughs> any, any of you three at all. It does not care. What were you going to say? I just wondered if we had merch. When does my voice matter here? It doesn't actually, <laughs> at all. <actually. laughs> oh, I love being dramatic. Who are you and what are you doing here? <sighs> all right. So I... Um, one of, and another thing that was funny is getting I was, Luke called me a, uh, a sellout for the whole like asking for donations thing, but luckily we don't have to do that anymore. Hmm. But, but if you want to give, I'm just kidding. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to do that. But so thanks everybody for getting us to a really good place going forward. And uh, one of the things you guys don't know or that you missed is we recorded earlier, and I did the woe during the episode. That's a lie. It's, a lie. it's not a lie. What do you mean we recorded earlier? Today, like like uh, we were, the, the we last went, episode. We were. You just missed it. That's not true. Wait, it is true. So full of it. I Wait. think I remember seeing it. It is no. true. Wait, we yeah, he he did it like really. It was it was really quick and really like really, in between episodes. Like, no, no, during during while we were all here. Oh. on the video. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that, but that no, like that's that can't not, be that's a fulfillment count. of it. We need to make a meme of it where it just isn't like repeat. You don't you, even know what a. That's not what a meme is. What is that thing? <laughs> that thing is you just waving your finger. No, we just do things like if it's like a repetitive thing. It's, it's I appreciate that, that you thought it was a meme. I appreciate. It's that. not a meme. There's memes that kind of repeat themselves, right? See, PT stick sticking up for you. It's a it's, it's a gif. Is that what you're talking about? No one calls it a gif. That's peanut butter or bro. gif. Gif or gif. I call it gif. Okay. That's anyway, so that's weird. what I want to see of you doing the the dance move. Um, Gigi is gonna have to help us out on this one. <laughs> I think you actually have to say, "I'm doing the wool right now." Let's and do this it. This isn't fulfillment. Right and stand up and do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I don't think. I think I did it. If you're worried that you're gonna stand out of the screenshot, remember you're like five two, so you still be. <laughs> <laughs> so today, whoa, what we're talking about, and I forgot to mention Power last episode, <laughs> yeah. is "Hungry for God" by Dr. Ralph Martin. Dr. Ralph Martin gave us our community retreat. Hmm. He's Did, a holy man. Were you, you were there too? I was there. You were there. We were in the back. Together. Were you guys were on a different one? Not there. I was on the Christmas one. Too he good. got sick. Okay. Too good. But um, so this is his book, uh, Hungry for God. And I'd still recommend you pick it up if, if even if you don't have it for this episode. I do think it's a really good look at a lot of like the fundamentals. And he's like him and himself is a very inspiring person. Yeah. Uh, I really, I really like him a lot. And he's really well integrated and it's just had a a ton of experience and i think a lot of what he has to say is, is really really good um so that's what we're going to get into and and the first episode is it's kind of like the working title is staying before the mystery and there's kind of two parts for it is is number one just this kind of return to like awe and wonder and seeing the truth of the the faith with fresh eyes um and then the second is just again something that's kind of come up before when we with uh when father isaac was on but it's something that where we mentioned dr martin again just like really asking for the grace to stay authentically before all of the mysteries um and and uh, to to kind of to keep us kind of moving or to kind of uh, again continue this this extended introduction um the reality is this the reality is that is that the the truths of our faith are like profoundly beautiful and inspiring and rich and transformative of our lives and the difficulty is though that's for so many of us we have just grown up hearing them we've been around them uh, in situations without a lot of like wonder or awe or reverence or devotion and so um through our own life through sin through just our environments there is just a little bit of like an indifference mm. um that we have before some of these truths. And so when we hear them, we, instead of them really like being like beautiful and, and moving to our hearts and convicting, they kind of can feel like cliches. 
And so the invitation, I think, is just to, again, through the gift of grace, seen with fresh eyes and a new wonder. And uh, Father PT can share a story if he wants to, but it, there was this, we just were on our way down to Pensacola. There was a funny experience because we, I think all of us f fly with some regularity or we have in our our lives, right? And so there is a part, like I pretty, my, my kind of go-to plan, like flight plan is like get on get on the plane plane hopefully i have a window seat put my hat down and try and like start falling asleep it's as soon as possible just, i've been traveling with him recently it's 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 what happens yeah so i'm just trying to like i'm like i've done i've been there done that i'm just trying to get through it and i'm just like i'm trying to get to my place right um where there was this dude and he was like an adult like grown man a couple rows behind me he was like when it's like taking it like whoa whoa we're in the air whoa yeah <laughs> Oh, you gotta get control of that. Get control. Of that. And he was like, he was like, really, <laughs> like, but but there's something about like when you see somebody like Father Isaiah is phenomenal at this. Who gets yes. like excited about stuff? I it's like really that. like encouraging. It's like whoa, whoa, <laughs> a dolphin, whoa. <laughs> there's something about that that's really refreshing mm -hmm. and it like and beautiful, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think there's something about the childlikeness and the, the full of wonder that's kind of a part of our should be a part of our Christian experience. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is kind of a different type of a kind of comment, but we take the we take the passions to the desert every year, and it's there's something about the desert that's just overwhelming the beauty, the wildness of God. That's a part of it is experiencing this. One of the brothers like told me recently, well, why you know why do you just take guys on a camping trip up upstate? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I mean, it's part of it's going through the desert. A part of it is is experienced with childlike wonder, the the immensity, the power, that like the Milky Way, the star, like all these different things from the gift of the desert, right? It, you just can't explain it. And it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And guys' response is just, just overwhelmed by beauty. Right. You're able to see and experience things, that the immensity of God, and you're you're invited to be full of wonder. Like you can't, we, we don't have that in our life barely any mm -hmm. right so we again it's just the part of the reason why we go to the desert is so guys can experience firsthand just our own littleness the childlike the wonder of of who god is in his creation right mm -hmm. and i think the struggle is with this uh this particular culture and, and young people is that technology has dulled us or even numbed us and so we can walk through life and we just totally miss the beauty and miss the miss the kind of the childlike wonder of of, of just daily life mm -hmm. right and um, we had friends here recently who want to go down and see uh, the go downtown to the Battery Park area and see uh, World Trade Center and all this stuff. And we walked out of the. If you walk, if you go down to World Trade Center and you mm -hmm. walk out, the first thing you see is the just incredible uh, new World Trade Center, the Freedom mm -hmm. Tower. Freedom Tower. Yeah. And you walk out, and it is. It just he his response was just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's just so overwhelming. You feel so small. Right. And again, that's just a a little a little glimpse of. The, the, the immensity of God, the immensity of these things that makes you feel small. And just his response again was a, a way to, to be, to just look at the, the kind of the power and the grandeur of God. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Great. One of the, um, what was I going to say now? Um, so I'm going to, we're going to, you might, the Mario story here is yeah. Mario, you know, prompt, prompt I was, me. I was down, I was helping out at, at summer projects and gave a talk on the Eucharist. And one of the things I did is listen to uh, one of Father Innocent's mission talks. Sorry, you had to do that. Well, no, we were fine. Right? Just to, so I stole from Father Innocent a little bit about uh, the story of Mario and and what I'm doing. Like what I like about Mario's story or why I'm bringing it in this context is one of the gifts of our life. I think is particularly maybe at, at the homeless shelter is we have guys who are coming to like sh do life with us and to kind of walk with us and to spend you know a certain amount of time with us who maybe didn't grow up just in like a Christ or a Christian atmosphere, who didn't grow up in like a Catholic environment, and who never heard all of this sort of stuff. And so when they come to us, um, especially like often there's a curiosity or they're hearing things for the first time. And so there's something renewing, I think, for us when we have these encounters of like these 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 men asking these questions like, OK, so like, wait, wait what is that? What does that mean? Or what were you saying? And um, and so I think I think one of the like a, a, one of my favorite examples is just the story of Mario. So. Father, you want to just yeah, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> this is kind of one of my go-to stories, and and it's a long story, so I'll focus on a few parts. But I think whether it, we we've been talking about we, the, the the man on the plane, it's like nature, right? You're in a plane, it's amazing, or 
just probably PT and his little animals <laughs> and uh, we're just seeing big buildings. Now we're, now we're going to talk, this story particularly talks about the kind of the wonder and grandeur of our Catholic faith and what we actually believe and what's true. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and one of the, the joys of my life has been working um, or has spent a lot of time working at our homeless shelter. And the gift of our homeless shelter is that it's smaller in nature. There's 30 men who live with us for a six to eight month period. And usually these men are, are hungry f- for, for, something more in life and they and we invite them to do life together it's not just a kind of a hey, you get a room and we'll give you some food and, and keep to yourself but it's a it's an invitation to live differently and the gift of relationship we so we invite them basically into our life <laughs> the the spiritual life the the fraternal life and things like that so it's a very family centered and i just <clears throat> it's very common for guys to come in and and for us to first talk about the mission and the and just what kind of place this is. And that particular day when Mario came in off the street, it was Thanksgiving day and Mario came in and, and Mario just sent such an amazing guy, but he, you know, he looks kind of rough on the outside. He has tattoos and piercings and he's just strong. And, and I'm like, man, this guy's been somewhere like this, this guy. And, and you could look at his face and again, see in his eyes that he had suffered. And so he shows up and, and I don't have time to give him a tour and, and go through the, the, the program. What I, I, I was like, Mario, we have mass in like five minutes. So why don't we go to mass? And, and then after that, we'll meet and I'll take you through what's going on. And at this time I didn't know he was Muslim. So he had never been to mass. There is some connection with his, I think his uh, one of his parents side of, of, of Christianity and even maybe Catholicism, but he had, he had no context of going to mass and what mass really was. And so, and so he goes to mass. It was just Thanksgiving mass. It was, it was pretty simple. And he, do you want to prompt me? Um, no, okay. I just was sitting up. Um, you could, you definitely can. Um, so he goes to mass and it's in our eyes, it's just kind of what we do every day and it just happens. And so now I'm, um, after mass back down in this, in, in the office and Mario comes in and he has this super profound kind of surprise look on, on his face. And he's like, father, what happened in there? <laughs> and I was like, well, I, it was beautiful. I'm like, well, Mario, I mean, we, as Catholic, we call that just the Holy mass. And, and I walked him through, you know, we, you know, we, we read the scriptures and priest gives a little word and then we have what we call the eucharistic prayer and here's what we actually believe when a prayer when the priest says these words over a piece of bread that we believe it actually becomes the body <clears throat> and blood of jesus right and and then we receive that into us and he he says prayers over the the chalice and we believe that becomes his holy and precious blood and and this is what catholic this is kind of the summit of the catholic life is that we get to receive god into us and live in this relationship it was like something we're probably all used to doing, just talking about what the, the gift of the sacraments. And he was just so overwhelmed by it. But he's like, he's like, Father, f- like you actually believe that that bread and the wine changes into God. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I was, I was so, I, I presented so much confidence and he was just so overwhelmed that as Catholics, we actually believe mm-hmm. in the, the gift of the Eucharist and what that means for us. And he could not, he was just so kind of overwhelmed by the experience. And it wasn't like, oh, you guys are stupid. It was like, like you actually believe that? And and he just was overwhelmed by it, right? And so there, right then there was just this opening of he was he was just a little child and it's almost like he was receiving and his eyes were full of wonder. Like, is this too good to be true? Can can God really come this close, mm-hmm. right? And, and brothers, that was like an opening for us to walk together over a long period of time because, I mean, because he was so humble and open, mm. I was able to share with him what we believe about the Eucharist and confession, what we believe about the church, scripture, like all these different things. And I would find Mario in the chapel by himself, just sitting before Jesus in the Eucharist. I would find him, you know, wanting to read more of the Bible and again, our own talks together and our walk together. And and I finally, after I found him in the chapel over a period of time, I'm like, Mario, it's just interesting. You're Muslim and you, you're knowing your background. I was like, what, like, why? Like, why are you, like, what are you doing in the chapel? Like, what, what's your experience? He's like, cause father, cause if what you say is true, like, I just want to be with God. Mm-hmm. And again, it was, everything was fresh and everything there was just full of mm-hmm. wonder and simplicity. If this is true, then my, I want, I just want to be with God. <laughs> I was like, he was just teaching me about just the, the gift of, of, um, of who we are and what we believe. And maybe the last thing is the, the beauty, the beautiful thing about this journey is that he, be, he, he came into full communion with the church. Mm-hmm. So um, I was a deacon at the time. So Father <laughs> baptized him, and um, conf- we in one day we baptized you. <laughs> you confirm 
you, you know, you receive, communion. you receive a communion, you hear confession. And the joke is if you would have coughed, I would have, um, you know, anointed him. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a whole lot of sacrament or grace going on right there. Mm -hmm. And, and the beautiful thing is, is that he, again, he was just overwhelmed by it. And it was, he was just, he, the, his place of receptivity and gratitude. And mm -hmm. he just felt like so saved right. and he was overwhelmed. So we're walking out of mass and, and he just, he just had this profound experience. It was this, you know, it was during the Easter season. It was a sunlit day and the sun was just shining, you know, brightly over everything. And he looked at the trees and he looked at the pond back there. He's like, father, everything's different now. Mm -hmm. Like the light comes in and you see the trees differently. You see the water differently. You see life differently. I was like, so again, he was just like a little child, like, man, like everything's different now. Like we could say that, mm -hmm. but it was for him. Mm -hmm. And again, he, this young man was just full of this divine life, the wonder and the gift of uh, hope, hopefully the rest of his life, he could access this place of what happened to him that day. It's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. I, and I think this is like, I do think, right. There is something about that. That's like, uh, it's something like when somebody sees it, something like this or hears it for the first time, it allows us to kind of like, it, it's a little bit disorienting and it's a little bit of like, Oh, okay. Like, like if this is his reaction, like what should my reaction be? And, and, um, I do just think like there's these certain truths of our faith, like, okay, like that. And, and actually people of other faiths can find them scandalous. Like the idea of the incarnation, right? Like we've just heard it and we celebrated Christmas and we know about the baby Jesus and we've had the crashes and we can just hear it and kind of keep, mm -hmm. keep, keep moving. But like God became man, <laughs> you know, um, the, the crucifix, right? How, how often do we uh, walk by a crucifix without really mm. second thought? You know, it's like, oh, God, actually, this is for you, right? That that God became man and died for you uh, to save you because you needed it because of sin, but also to because he wants to be with you forever. Um, the the truths of the mass and, and how often we can receive, we can just go to mass kind of like, okay, I got to get this. I got to, you know, I run into mass. I run out of mass. I got to get this thing done. I got to check the Sunday obligation box. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, yeah, we can, you know, pray, receive communion while thinking about, TikTok dances or something. Um, yeah, that was a subtweet to you. Wow. Um, wow. Or, you know, the scriptures, things like that. Like there's just, there are all of these parts of our faith that we can just, we've kind of just been around and and we can grow indifferent to. And I think the invitation with the grace of God is, is to um, to see them anew. I remember my uh, time as a chaplain uh, in prison, uh, which was awesome. Um, I remember giving a talk to a, a group of guys about forgiveness. And so kind of proposing that uh, forgiveness was um, kind of uniquely Christian, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like Jesus teaches us to forgive. And so a bunch of these guys, and I told guys I would, I would be able to chat and also if they wanted to pray afterwards. And so this guy kind of waits in line. His name was Caleb and he was just super, again, kind of, he was feeling so much, so much emotion at the time he had just got there and he's a young kid and, you know, but again, tattooed up and things. And, and so we just had, he, he kind of was the last one, didn't want anybody to see that he was crying. And in the midst of him kind of sharing his heart with me, I had to go. And so I gave him my Bible and it was kind of clear that the Christian reality wasn't one that he was familiar with. And so I gave him my Bible and he's like, what do I do with it? And then, so I, I put a bookmark at the beginning of the gospel of Luke and the end of gospel of Luke. And I was like, just read these pages in the next week. And then we'll, we'll talk about it when I get back. And so I came back the next week and he has these big bright eyes, you know, and just super fascinated. And, and, um, and to your point, Father Mark Mary, like in the midst of like talking about what he read and he said, he was like repeating all these, like, well, he became man and then this and then that, and he came and they did healed and he preached and he, all these things. And he said, but I was brother at the time. He's like, but brother, I just, I just, can't get over the fact that he died, but you guys say he's not dead anymore. Mm -hmm. And it was just like this, this like instant, just like, so he's not, you You really don't think he's dead anymore. And we're like, yeah, bro, we really believe that he's like risen from the dead. And he was just like, he like got emotional. He's just like, I can't understand that. that re If that's really true, that means he's alive for us. And he's just like overwhelmed with that. Mm -hmm. He's not dead anymore, right? And I said, no, he's not, you know? So it's just, again, just kind of taking it in. You're like, oh gosh, we take advantage of the reserve, uh, you know, take it advantage of the reality. Just like, oh gosh, like, okay, yeah, Jesus rose from the dead. Like, what does that mean? Well, this kid was experiencing that for the first, like the consequences of that for the first time that Jesus is alive, mm -hmm. you know, um, which is just super powerful. And again, he's like 21 in prison, misses his family. And all of a sudden he's reading the gospel of Luke and he's like hit with the reality of Jesus and he's overwhelmed by it, you know, which was just a, yeah, a powerful and beautiful thing.
Um, yeah, even too sometimes in, um, for me, confession, you know, like hearing confessions and also going to confessions too, like, yeah, just sometimes seeing people's reaction, like you pronounce the words of absolution and like, anyway, I've been in a situation where people have sometimes just like audibly like yeah, experiencing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Like it's real, you know? And, um, and oftentimes it's, for me, it's helpful once again, just to, to experience that. Um, but more recently, I've just had a couple of instances where I've been in public, uh, taking the kids to uh, an amusement park, it happened a couple of times, but in particular, I uh, went to a gas station to fill up for gas. <clears throat> and there's a little kid who's in the Bronx, a um, little kid, I'm walking past him and he just stops and looks up at me. He's like, what are you? <laughs> I was like, I'm a priest and I kept walking and whatever it is. And then like outside, he kind of like followed me out the store. Um, <laughs> he, he said something like do a magic trick <laughs> i was like i'm not a magician he's like but you were for god and so like the whole thing of like okay miracle mm -hmm. i was like okay the miracles that and so like we had a little catechetical moment there like miracles aren't magic they're actually god you know so whatever look at you but it was interesting like it was a reminder to me of course like you take it for granted as far as wearing the habit or like once again this truth that i am a consecrated man and i represent jesus christ you know mm -hmm. like so at least for me, it's something like 14 years in, like, okay, yeah, this is kind of what I do. But like, there's wonderment in his mm -hmm. eyes and then even more so, okay, recalling this is who you are in the eyes of the father, you know? And so, so once again, um, <clears throat> and we'll talk about the gospels, right? Or something like that. No. Oh, you can talk about whatever you want right now. Uh, okay, cool. So, um, so in particular, right, there's the way in which uh, somebody articulated this to me. Uh, it's helpful because um, it happens to us in real life. Uh, not to say that spiritual life isn't real life, but um, but in particular, so we, for instance, the desert you're talking about, Father Innocent, or you go to the Grand Canyon, or you, you see something beautiful, right? You're awestruck. Like you're just before the mystery of what, this is grandiose, this is crazy, like what's going on? <clears throat> and then what happens naturally is you wanna stay there, right? Like you just wanna take it in as long as you can. That's why people uh, take out their cell phones, let's take a picture, let's take a selfie. Like even if you have a nice plate of food, right? That's the thing, like, this is awesome. Like I just wanna save this memory forever. And then finally, what do you do? You tell people about it, right? Mm. That's the third thing. Mm. And you go like, hey, Father Innocent, I just went to drink to the Grand Canyon. Let me show you my pictures or whatever it is. And that's like a, a real thing that happens. Um, but for the spiritual life, hopefully that happens too, where once again, we're we're hopefully inspiring or at least we're coming to this place of, of trying to stir up that wonderment as, as children once again. Like we could be awestruck by these mysteries that we sometimes can be glib about or just glance over. But no, like, no, like when when the priest says, this is my body given up for you, that is actually Christ's body, you know, like, and so to, to take a moment and then the rest there. Um, but also too, I think the gospel principle or at least the gospel passage is the Samaritan woman, right? Where she comes to experience Jesus <clears throat> and she wants to stay with him. And eventually she goes and tells everybody and mm. she becomes a disciple and she becomes one who is real, who brings people to Jesus. And so I think if we fall in love with just being awestruck and, and maybe just even forming our hearts just to, to wonder at what does this really mean when God says he's merciful or like, or you're what, absolved. Or yeah. Right. Or I'm absolved. Or like, what does this really mean? And like, think, or just, yeah, just sit there and this is awesome. And, and to stay there, but then also to tell people about it. And so it's beautiful. Thanks for giving me that space. You're so welcome, Jim. And I think part of the the work, if you will, is, and we've said it before, and we, I guess we'll just kind of keep saying it, is you do have to regularly like slow down. Mm -hmm. And you have, to, you have to like, you know, really look and really ask the questions and really, <clears throat> and again, this is, it's ultimately not a natural thing. It's a supernatural thing to continue to like be kind of new um, and open before all the mysteries. Um, but we I just... You have to pray like you have to you have to, have to pray and and um can, to go back to that the tiny the zoo story mm -hmm. is particularly in a formation house or as those who work with young people like we can kind of see this this struggle is once you've been doing once you've been doing these things for a while you've been having these conversations now you come and you come across like a like an 18 year old or 17 year old or whatever a 20 year old college student who's like just like diving into the faith and they're really getting in and they're hearing all these things for the first time. And they're like, have you heard of Marian consecration? And they like, that's, that, you know, they want to talk about that. And, or it's like, do you hear about Our Lady of Guadalupe or <laughs> Pier Giorgio Versace? Like they, they're like, there's all these, like these things of the faith that maybe we've talked about 25 times over the last, you know, 20 years or something like that. And so it's like, okay, I've already had that conversation, but, but they're coming in with like all of this new energy. Cause it's like for the first time. 
And the temptation, if we're not careful, is to be like me at the zoo. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, this is boring. Okay, this is like, (laughs) this is like not okay. It's not a big deal. We've this has been, you know, we've been talking about this forever. Like, okay, you're you're giving a giraffe a piece of lettuce. Mm -hmm. Like, get over it. (laughs) But but right, like you can. There's like that that's like that cynicism and sort of that like kind of a, a coldness or whatever to some of these things that can really that can really happen. And so we have to be careful of that because that's just, that's really, it's not being rooted in staying before the reality, but it's also a very like unattractive counter witness. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, wait, hold on. Like, why are, like, why are these hearing about these pious things? um, These spiritual things. Why is your response actually one of like, kind of like disgust? And there, of course, there's there's some sort of prudence and balance and things like that, but just something that we want to be careful of. Yeah. And I think we need reminders and, you know, we're, we're professional religious, but I love, that's why I love working with the poor, working with the young people Mm because it keeps us in the mystery. And I just think of this, one of our neighbors, Dolores, she's like a fan favorite around here. Um, This was in the past year. (laughs) She's recently come back to the faith and she just has a wonderful, simple faith. And we remind her that she has to go to mass on Sunday and she gets like all excited for the first time and things like that. But she came and I'm, I've, I'm very much a father to her, to her and I love her a lot. And, but she, I mean, I know she loves me too, but she asked me for a lot of things. So the, the, the joke is that it's like, Hey father, I love you. Like, can I have some meatloaf? Like it's the most random things. Right. But one day again, being used to, and kind of like, okay, here we go again. Dolores comes and she's going to ask her something. I'm like, okay, no doors. And she's like, father, I love you. She's like, can I have some bread? I'm like, but Dolores, you know, we're, we, it's the end of the week. We ran out of bread. And she's like, no, fa- please follow. I just need the bread. And I'm like, Dolores, we don't have any bread. And I was going to literally go inside and give her like the two pieces we had left. And so we're standing outside at this point. And she's like, no, father, not like bread, but like the bread. Mm-hmm. And she pointed to the chapel. Like you, are you talking about Jesus in the Eucharist? Like that bread? She's like, yeah, I'm talking about that bread. I want the bread. I was like, oh, like it was just very beautiful. Like she, again, it was a very, very simple way to talk about it. But to her is very clear. And it took a few times for me to understand what she was saying, but she pointed to the chapel. She's like, I want the bread. And I was like, oh man, like I wish I longed for the bread like she did. Right. It was just, again, a very beautiful kind of glimpse and while she does ask me for a lot of stuff, it was just a glimpse and a breakthrough where I was like, she is thinking about Jesus in the Eucharist. She longs for him, the bread. <laughs> and it was just beautiful. I'm like, man, like we all need the bread. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's, it's so I, I ended up giving her the, the blessed sacrament. But. She calls you Father Hennessy, right? <laughs> yeah, she, that she does. Is there a reason for that? <laughs> I mean, you got to know Dolores, but Henny, the, the funny thing, Hennessy is like a whiskey, yeah. if I'm not yeah it's some sort of drink but yeah, it's, some, it's not a reference to the drink though. it is not that's why because yeah. sometimes she gets it right but yeah. but it's funny people people think it's more even more hilarious because it's a reference to uh-huh. a whiskey and but she's like oh father hennessy like it, it's real she calls me that she got a couple she's we've got one brother no one of the brothers that's his nickname because she brother says ear, no father ears father ears does anyone else have a nickname she calls me cupcake she does she really <laughs> And how I mean, how old is Dolores? She's in her. She's sixty five. And she's just kind of been through. She's been mm-hmm. through a lot, and and she's been around a long time. So it's one yeah. of those neighbors that we we walk with, and she's definitely part of our family. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was beautiful because she knows like when the when the postulants were leaving, so she just kind of like stayed here like all day, all just day. wanting to all day just say goodbye to That's awesome. I just want to throw out there uh, to your point earlier, Father Mark Mary, too. Like it's it's great working with guys who are discerning because there's a real awe and wonder to our life, and a real awe and wonder to like what God is opening up. Uh, in their own hearts when it comes to their own discernment and their own experience of what God could be calling them to. But it's funny. It's again, like years into this thing. And that's why certain brothers like can, can only walk with those guys and certain brothers can generally only live at formation houses. Cause some guys are just like, yeah, dude, just get over it. Like it's, you know, we have an awesome life or whatever. You know? <laughs> yeah. But you know, we can, we can like hurt a guy's vocation if, if we don't like reverence the fact of like what's happening in their heart and yeah. how, how they stand before the mystery of our life, how they stand before the mystery that like a guy, like when he walks into the chapel and he sees the brother kissing the floor and and he sees the pile of sandals out front of the chapel, you know, just like he, you can see guys like visibly moved by, by the, all of that. And then when they see us loving the poor and they see, you know, all just the, this, like one guy just said, I, he, I sat at dinner with 25 people and it was just so beautiful. And I was so moved by it, you know, interiorly we're like, Give like the the <laughs> you know, so just like in, in whatever way we're reminded, but like there's the, 
yeah, there's real beautiful gifts of like people who stand before the mystery and, and are, are allowing their hearts in this kind of like childlike way. You imagine St. Francis, just like what he was before when he saw creation, what he was before mm-hmm. when he saw the church, when he saw the images of that, that, you know, that he experienced the Lord and like, there was just this beautiful, like, whoa, and he was able to receive it, you know? And so it's just beautiful. I think it's awesome because it's sometimes it's in, instead of getting cold or instead of, you know, missing something, it's a reminder once again of just like, oh gosh, like, yeah, this is, our life is really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Following Jesus is really beautiful. Um, and it's, instead of getting annoyed, you're like, yeah, it's, you know, yeah, it's just good to be reminded of that. And I think I've seen like a, I don't know, like a little kid go into like Disneyland or something like that for the first time where they're like, oh, there's Goofy, there's Donald, <laughs> there's this ride, there's that. And like, they're all kind of like hype and excited, you know? And I think uh, really if we are like living from this place and again it does it's a little bit more sober but Mm -hmm. like i think like this whole thing with like saint francis and nature and being out there i do think that there's something to this like because he was seeing the world with these eyes of faith and his his heart was still so like fresh right there was just this freshness of of the grace of the holy spirit who makes all things new and like that's a constant thing that there was like this awe and this wonder as he was going about the fullness of life right and to have another example of like where things can go wrong or what it looks like or just my own experience of wrestling with it is uh, we had one guy who uh had this in, who had this common practice of like we at saint joseph's friary there's like basically like an entrance and an exit to the chapel to kind of because there's so many guys it just helps with the flow of traffic I really, is i don't really follow that really you, yeah you okay. don't well and but you guys are coming in and out sometimes in like lower traffic yeah, times sure. you know um but uh he would like you know it's in there's like you go in and there's some space but what he was he was doing is like he was going in like taking a few steps to the left and then he'd like go down on, on like he'd go down kiss kiss the floor like you do and then he'd like stay there kneeling for like a, an extended period of time yeah, he became a roadblock mm-hmm. but my understanding right and this is the thing like my understanding like what he was doing is he he was like really taking the space to like recognize that he was entering into the Lord's presence, the most holy Eucharist. Right. And he's like really sort of entering into this reality of, I live with like the blessed sacrament and I'm entering into his presence. But, at the, but at the same time, it's like my human response in part is like, dude, bro, that, dude, that's, get a, up. that's a walkway, <laughs> you know, you need to get out of the way. Mm-hmm. And so there's like this, like this plane thing. Okay. There's somebody on the plane who's like getting really excited. Whoa, we're flying. This is awesome. And I'm like, bro, I'm trying to take a nap. Like we don't talk on planes. Like that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, um, and, and so some of this stuff, like if we, if we, again, if we do lose the greater context of like the beauty of the, of the faith and what we're, what we're doing, it, it leaves us vulnerable to, to pettiness. Right. And this is where we, we can go to mass where we are entering into these saving mysteries and we're like grumpy because somebody took our seat or we're grumpy because of this or that thing. And it's like, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's just like, cont- let's keep everything in its, in its proper context. Cause if not, we can become these like cynical old people. Washington directors. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and once again, to your points, it's, it's renewing, right? The Holy spirit is, is ever ancient, ever new. Um, I or is it God? Something anyway, like sorry. Saint Beauty Augustine. ever ancient. Ever there you new. go. Right, I, yeah. Anyway, just keep going, bro. I am going to. And so the um, the thing is, like, right with both the guys who are enamored with our life, and like, there's this initial draw, or even to like the plane. Like, okay, like we we can be renewed by these mysteries. We don't have to once again carry the things that we've carried throughout our life, and and so it could be, always be a chance for beginning again. Um, just to come with a, a new set of eyes. Just to really okay, like once again, like what's what's happening here, and I don't have to, like just the old humdrum, whatever it is. Like you think about this, or maybe you don't think about this, but sports, for instance, like <clears throat> sometimes, like you hear guys, professional baseball players, like I just love, I just love playing the game, and like they, you know, like you sometimes you watch them, especially if you go to live to a, a sporting event, like they're almost like little kids, you know, because there's this deep love, and then like sometimes even hearing stories of like now they're playing across uh, in basketball, like from the star they idolize you know like and so even though they've done it for a long time there's still like this newness to it and what's the newness is once again just like the wonderment the fact that like wow i'm here like i'm actually able i'm, I'm privileged to to do this for a living and i think once again if we we approach it in that way where 
like this is a privilege for me to be able to be at mass, to be a friar, mm -hmm. to to be able to be before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. And once again, like I don't even fully understand what that means. <laughs> you know, like theology falls, like the words that are said are just are still very short of the reality, the trueness of, of, of like what's before us in the Blessed Sacrament or whatever theological truth we're trying to get at. Um, and once again, like the Lord just loves the fact that we're there. You know, like, and so once again, how is it happening for us in the eyes of the Lord? How is he, he truly mm. excited about us being there? You know, and so uh, once again, this could be renewing for us and just our, our yes to, that we give to him. I think what's interesting, I think we're, we're now op have opened up both parts of things we want to talk about. So mm -hmm. staying before the fullness and, and, and don't have a small heart or don't, don't kind of have your own way mm -hmm. of getting kind of stuck in yourself or we're not in control kind of thing. And I think we have to just, just beg for this grace especially before the sacraments, particularly, and I, and I don't actually want to have it, I'm not open this to talk about it, but just to say it is, is that especially when we go to mass, right? We, we do want to stay before the awe and wonder, but, it, but sometimes that can be difficult, right? So we go to mass and it's not that inspiring or the priest, you know, it's it, the priest is not inspired, right? You're just like a oh, father, come on. Like this is what's happening here is in, like the most incredible miracle. And the priest is like, well, you just kind of going through the motions so we can get stuck that like, and it's always this, oh man, if the liturgy was better, father was just better, more, more reverent. And I want to say that the, this whole renewal of the liturgy, the whole renewal of the church, the sacraments, like just the going deeper. I think we all were constantly called to, to this gift of renewal. But at the same time, God doesn't have to wait for the liturgy to be perfect to, to give us a sense of this awe and wonder, right? So I, I don't want to cop out and be like, mm -hmm. liturgy, just go to church and it doesn't matter. Because I think there's there's a beauty, I mean, the the gift of the beauty of the Eucharist and the, the mystery, it just, it's kind of one of the, it's the source and the summit of our faith. But I do think we, God wants to give us a grace though, no matter what parish you go to, or no matter what, how your parish, you know, how, how your priest says mass is, again, just that it's valid and, and all these different things. Okay. But, but we let's, let's ask for the grace to, to give me, you know, go, going back to this first love, the awe and wonder of what's really happening. And we might have to do the work ourselves there that we might not be inspired by our parish, but this is where we go to mass. And so we want to stand before the fullness mm -hmm. and ask for the grace and teach our kids and okay, here's what's happening here. So, I mean, I think that's how the father, like moms and dads can, can form their kind of domestic church that we're constantly st stirring this up and just teaching our kids about the liturgy, teaching our kids about the, uh, the confession and things like that. So I, I do think there's a part of us that we just want to make sure that we also stir into flame, like Paul, St. Paul says, the mystery. So the, the awe and wonder can be a little bit more accessible. I think it's probably pretty safe to say that most people probably enjoyed in the last couple of years watching The Chosen. Like it's probably was a, a experience that most people or have heard of it yeah. or heard of it, but just like, oh gosh, like if you watch a particular episode, people are just like, oh gosh, it's really moving. And I think it's beautiful because sometimes I think Chosen in particular did a beautiful job of like maybe my experience or what they portrayed in their, in their episodes kind of blew in my experience of Jesus kind of out of the water and it gave me a new way to experience and mm. be fascinated with the Lord, yeah. you know, and so in, in creativity and in, you know, in the way they propose some of those things, instead of being uncomfortable with it, like, oh gosh, no, that's not how Jesus, I imagine Jesus or not. That's not how I imagine this particular experience. Um, I, and what I like about that is because again, we can get pretty short sighted in our, when we read the gospel or we hear the gospel at, at mass or, and we can and just be pretty locked in right and and then that's where we kind of lose fascination with the lord like are we fascinated with the person of jesus and and what he does and, and what he how he loves before him how he does his miracles how he preaches how he forgives sins how he delivers what all the things that jesus does right so when when the chosen comes along and they they give us a, a perspective and, and bring something to life before us what do we do we become fascinated with jesus again right and i think our op the obstacles, the challenges, the, our pettiness, some of the things we were talking about can get in the way of, of a deeper experience of the Lord, right? And so we need things in, in ho hopefully just this discussion, but we, we want to go to church and we want to read the word of God and we want to read the gospels and we want to be fascinated with Jesus. We want to be fascinated with, with what he does and, and how he does it and, and how he loves and how he opens his heart to the people around him, you know? Um, yeah, and the, our pettiness and our smallness of heart and our distractions and, and all the things that make everything so small just can limit our experience of the Lord, right? We're not children before him fascinated by what he's doing, but we're just kind of like a, like you before the draft. You're like, oh, he's eating lettuce, you know? 
Um, but what does the spirit know? The spirit can, 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 um, yeah, release a new spirit in us of fa- uh, fascination with the Lord. I um, mean, I just think the chosen did a great job with that, like moving something in people in a deeper way to be like, oh gosh, that's really beautiful in the person of Jesus there. Yeah. I'm going to bring it to uh, why this has to do with Hungry for God by Dr. Martin. And the the um, first chapter is Knowing God, the encounter, with uh, the books, no, I don't know why it's but that knowing God, the encounter with Jesus are on the top of the page. I think the title is the encounter with Jesus, but he's talking about his own story and his own kind of like at one point, like he's like, you know, really kind of wrestling with these questions and, and he goes on a cursio retreat. And, um, and this, I think what he says here is really beautiful. I began to sense his presence as if he were in the room, a struggle went on. If I admitted he existed was the son of God and had risen from the dead, there would be no recourse, but to be his disciple. There was nothing more important in the world than the reality of God and his call to us. And so I think this is like where Dr. Martin coming like really authentically and with an um, intellectual honesty before the mystery of the faith. He asked this question, which I think is the right question before the truths that we propose that, that, that Catholicism and Christianity propose. Like if this is true, if Jesus is the son of God, if he died and rose again, then that needs to be the most important thing in my life. Mm. And there is no, there is no um, reasonable or just response other than to be his disciple. And, mm. and we'll get into it a little bit. There's no reasonable or just response than than to take him at his word. Like if this is true, if the, if the scriptures are the word of God, then then I need to read and listen and respond. If if Jesus is present in the most holy Eucharist, I need to like be there with him, you know. And so I and I think that's like what we're getting to. And and part of the fruit of like the, the coldness or the sterility before these faiths or whatever is just like we're no longer responding to them or moved by them and and so i think this is it like we just want to ask these questions be before the mysteries again and just kind of do a bit of an examination like okay if this is true so what if this is true what does it mean for my life and and to allow that to um convict us authentically i have one other thought but it seems like you want to jump on that yeah yeah just um and then i was impressed most uh on the retreat with Ralph Martin, not with not I by mean, me. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> not that time. but um, but I don't know if you remember this, but like Ralph Martin said a lot of great things, you know. But what I was most impressed with was just his personal witness, mm-hmm. um, both his story, but even more so, just like how he presented things. Like there was an excitement about the, the way he presented stuff, and and it was just like super simple in a way, like yeah. And so Scripture says this, and so that's it, you know. Like, like it's yeah. really right. like very simple and childlike, but obviously the men's brilliant and i'm not to yeah just to say that it was just like a simple presentation but i was like wow this man really believes you know um Mm -hmm. he really believes god at his word and he loves him tremendously and so um just to attest that like it's something that's not just written words on a on a page but he actually does believe and 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 it's once again something i could speak it spoke to my heart hopefully happens for us where okay like we're falling in love more with the lord and and just our yes and the way in which we love and speak about him can speak once again to the wonderment that other people can have. Yeah, and the falling in love has consequences, right? right? And so I, I I think it's good to say that the journey can look different for everybody. Mm-hmm. But once you fall in love and once something happens, like it's an experience that something happens to us and you think of St. Francis, like, yes, it was a journey, but one day he got up and things were different and or, or he just was open to the grace of things happening. So... I do think that it just demands a response. Like I, I just love that that quote from uh, Dr. Martin. He says, "If I make, if I say yes to this, if I mm-hmm. sent and and believe, then life changes. There's just no way of living differently here." And you think about, I, I think about all the young people. They they hunger, they hunger for this. Like they want to make a decision, and no decisions matter. Mm-hmm. My my decision for Jesus matters, right? And and so I just think it's beautiful. But yes, it might take time, and it's not like, you know. Er, it's not like a simple math equation, but as you fall in love more and more with Jesus, as you become more fascinated with him, it demands a response of our life. Right. And I think that's just, this is what he's getting at. All right. And, and with that, and this is going back to when Father PT was talking about the like the basketball thing, like when somebody like loves the game, like right. you can like see it. And I do think that is at the heart of actually what what keeps it fresh is the love, right? Mm-hmm. Like when we when the when we can these truths um bring us into a relationship with love and we continue to enter into that relationship and to really foster and cultivate that relationship of love, then I think the fruit of that is going to be this freshness, this awe, the wonder 
uh, the joy, the gratitude before the mysteries and before the faith. And um, so I, so I do think like ultimately, like certainly we ask for it in, in faith. It's, it's, it's a work of the Holy spirit, but I do think it's cultivated and, and foundationally about the ongoing growth and in, in love in this relationship. Beautiful. Cool. All right. Um, so I think that's kind of, I think that's what we got for today. Sound all right? Um, no. <laughs> of course it sounds all right. And, and again, like I, I think like next, we're going to, we're going to, uh, next week, we're going to continue to be with, uh, we're going to do another episode on chapter one and kind of keep going with it. But uh, Hungry for God by Dr. Martin, he's a champion. And I think it's worth um, looking at and and just like a little a brief kind of invitation to an examine of right okay like let's just let's just do a little bit of time in a prayer and an examine of of being still and being before the mysteries um, it could be an invitation for you to think about like um, yeah asking these questions again so if this is true like what's it mean like if this is true what's it mean or to ask these questions and state these truths of the faith and see how it how it resonates uh, with your heart. And perhaps um, there's two, I'll say, I'll give you three places to concretely um, pray with this if you'd like to. I think number one, again, is probably in your own room, uh, you have access to a crucifix. So just to sit before the crucifix and just remember, like, what does this mean? And 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 how is my life, um, is, is my life in the way I'm living a response to the truth uh, that is symbolized and I'm reminded of by the crucifix? So I think that's number one. Number two certainly can be the same with uh, the Most Holy Eucharist, like, okay, if Jesus is here, if this is true, like what's it mean? And does my, is my life and how I'm living it corresponding to, to this reality? Like, um, and then number three, I think you could just take the creed. And so I believe in one God, the father, Almighty. And just like to go through it and like, okay, like if I, be, do I believe this? If I believe this, so what? And just to prayerfully slowly kind of return to these and ask these questions. I th- and, um, and then asking for the grace to respond in a way, which is, um, which correlates and and is just and true and right. Look at what you're just doing. What you do, this summary and that's awesome. Not that you need to add anything to it, um, but, but <laughs> well, we said it a few times too. But it's also a grace to ask for a childlike heart, right? Because sure. children get this. We're all children before the heavenly Father, and that's an actual grace that's given. We don't need to be so adult all the time, especially when it comes to the faith. But you know, we we think of the our nieces and nephews. We think of people, we young 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 people. There's an awe and wonder naturally that comes to them, right? So that's not accidentally going to happen, but it's it's a real gift that the Lord can give us to see things new, and so just to to pray that we're we're called to be children, and this is this is really easy for children to do to receive these things, and so just a particular grace there as well. Amen. Yeah. That's it. Sometimes you just got to sit down and have a bowl of lucky charms with your buddies, you know. Yeah. Seriously. Or you got to open your hands and let the lemurs take the crazies yeah. out of your hands. <laughs> That's cool. I get that, bro. I'm there with you. Yeah. I'm there with you. All right. Uh, before we give some closing shout outs, uh, do you want to close us with a prayer? Yes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you and thank you, adore you. We thank you for giving us your Son, Jesus, and your Holy Spirit. Thank you um, for just being so good to us. We do ask for a new childlike wonder to receive um, the gift of who you are in the church, in the sacraments, in the Word of God and one another. Uh, we ask for the grace to see and experience differently the, the gift of what it means to be your sons and daughters. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You guys got shout outs over there? Thank I, oh, Go for it. I just want to say the shout out, shout out I have is just to say thank you to all the people who donated. I know we've done this before, but I'm just continually being moved by the people who support this podcast and going different places, people who listen and allow themselves to be moved. And so they're just grateful that God uses as an instrument in your life, but also just the fact that we, we ask for help because we want to continue to provide this podcast in a particular way. And it just means a lot to me and us as brothers too, that you guys responded and that we just couldn't do this without you. We do this for you. We pray for you. And so just, we just have deeply grateful hearts. A uh, quick shout out to Liz and Matt Marcolini. We got to meet their uh, daughter Zoe recent or Zelly, excuse me, Zelly recently, <sighs> and uh, such a gift. And they're good friends and uh, super kind and good and generous to us, um, almost too much in a way. <laughs> so, but Zelly's really beautiful, and uh, it was just good to be with them recently. So, God bless you guys. It's a little home cooking here. Shout out to Therese and Alex Serafin. I know you guys are listening. 
mom's making you listen but shout out to my niece and nephew yeah. <laughs> they, do they make it to the end and you make listen. sure make sure you listen to mom and dad <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right uh, so we got father angelus is, is drinking from a mug from a cc from the awesome. Lieb, Lieb family. So Vicky, Jeff, Liz, Clarissa, Amelia. I think it's Myra. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. And uh, Alberto, thank you for... That's the sweet. They got, yeah. yeah, we got, we got pictures awesome. from Assisi, which is sweet. Nice. And thanks to Connor and Rainey for the um, UK mug. Go Cats. Go Cats. About that life. How's Father Innocent's mug? <laughs> wow, wow. No Innocent. one gave me anything to use. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what else was happening here? And thanks again to... Um, Luke Benzinger for making me the the man I am today. <laughs> I, I think I owe it all to you. So to all of those who enjoy the podcast owe it to you as well. So um, thank you, thank you, Luke, for everything. <laughs> I'm not messing around. He's he's a. I like him a lot. All right. Great. Peace, y'all. Peace. Peace. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos, and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day That God is love That life is short That all will be well And I know